Hi, this is Chaplain Darrell Densford, the Deputy Garrison Chaplain at Fort Wainwright. For this installment of Water from the Well, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to share with you a video from yesterday, which was a National Day of Prayer. It's a video that Chaplain Soljum, the Army Chief of Chaplains, shared uh, from the Pentagon Chapel. Uh, in it, he shares a little bit about that chapel, chapels in general, and the place of prayer in the life of the soldier, and then prays for, for us and for our nation. And I, I thought that would be appropriate, even though it's the day after the National Day of Prayer, it's still good for us to pray, and it's good for us to hear from our Army Chief of Chaplains. Uh, so I invite you to, uh, to listen in as Chaplain Soldier shares with us. Welcome to the Pentagon Chapel. I'm Chaplain Tom Soldier the U.S. Army 25th Chief of Chaplains. This chapel is a place of worship used throughout the week by people of many faiths and backgrounds and walks of life. The area of the Pentagon that we're in right here was destroyed when at 0937 on the morning of September 11, 2001, it was struck by a plane. Connected to the chapel is a memorial to honor the 184 people who were killed in that attack. We pause to remember those who were killed and the many more who were killed that day and the families who grieved their loss. As a nation, we remember those as well who have answered the call to protect us against evil when it arises. This chapel is a testimony that out of the ashes, hope will arise, that in the face of evil, good will prevail, that men and women will continue to answer the call to fight for freedom and de oppressa liber to free the oppressed. This chapel is a place where all can be encouraged in their faith. It is a place when one is looking for answers in worship or in days of rain or sunshine, times of joy, times of pain, one can always pray. I found that as a young soldier in a chapel, I found sanctuary. It was a place where I could go to get away from the daily life and rigors of being a soldier to have a quiet sanctuary moment before my Lord and God. It was there in that solace, in that sanctuary, in that chapel in a faraway distant place in Germany that I made a connection with God that has driven the course of my life from that day forward. And it was an answer to prayer. It is certainly powerful. I believe that God hears our prayers and he acts and he answers them. Today in the midst of all that's going on in our nation and in our world, we must pray. Today is a national day of prayer an annual event held on the first Thursday in May. This year's theme is Pray God's Glory Across the Earth. It comes from Habakkuk 2.14, which reads, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and the waters covered the sea. Days of prayer have been called upon since 1775, when the Continental Congress designated a time of prayer in forming a new nation. The National Day of Prayer was passed by Congress and is signed into law by President Harry Truman on the 17th of April, 1952. The law was amended by Congress and signed by President Ronald Reagan on 5 May, 1988, designated the first Thursday in the month of May as a National Day of Prayer. The Army places a high value on religious accommodation and freedoms and our soldiers' rights to observe the tenets of their respective religions or to observe no religion at all. One of my favorite passages on prayer is taken from the scriptures in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. As we pause to pray, I'm reminded of a prayer that President Roosevelt prayed for our nation just over 75 years ago on D-Day, the 6th of June, 1942. And in the abbreviated context of that prayer, he simply stated, Almighty God, our sons, the pride of our nation, this day have been set upon for a mighty endeavor. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, and steadfastness in their faith. No truer words were ever spoken at a time of crisis. And as we face this time and this season together of a global pandemic during this national day to prayer, it is only right, true, and fitting that we would turn our hearts towards God and pray because he hears from heaven and he answers when his people call. Please, where you are, uh, join me, if you would, in bowing your heads and joining me in a moment of prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you today 
for your loving hand and for your ear that is inclined to hear your people's prayers. We pray for our world today as we are facing a global pandemic, a crisis that has befallen upon us, uh, it seems as though in a way unprecedented in our lifetime, that across our world and around the globe, people are being impacted, lives are being lost, and so much of our world and society is being impacted. So we lift up our nation during this COVID crisis in our army. We ask God that you would protect us and that you would keep us strong and that wherever Americans would be found around the world, Lord, that you would watch over, keep, and protect them. Lord, we ask for those who are listening today that if they are experiencing a time in their life of real testing, of trial, Lord, I pray today that as we incline our hearts to seek your face, that you will answer our prayers today, that you will strengthen them in their spirits, lifting up our families and our children as well as the men and women who wear the uniform and the civilians who stand alongside of us. Lord, we all recognize that we need you today. So loving and gracious God, would you watch over your flock today? Would you care for them? Would you strengthen them and pour your spirit out upon us all? Lord, we ask that in these times that we would have a posture of humility before you. It is in that spirit, Lord, that we humbly bow before you today asking that you would incline your ear from heaven, that you would hear our prayer, that you would heal our land. We pray these things in your mighty and most holy and precious name, Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us here today at the Pentagon Chapel. May God bless you and keep you, not only today, but in the days and weeks and months to come. For God and country, 